Now that we've got an idea of what parametric equations are and kind of generally how they work, we need to expand our toolbox to include all of the same calculus tools that we have for working with rectangular functions. So in this lecture, we're, we're going to think about differentiation. And in the next uh, part of the series, we'll look at integration techniques uh, for getting things like areas and arc lengths. So to see how the formula we're going to derive on the next slide works, and to confirm that it's doing what we expect it to do, I'm going to start with something that we're already familiar with, just the standard cosine function. So to start with, we can do the obvious thing and differentiate each of these two functions uh, with respect to c. And this gives us a useful starting point but with these equations, we're just seeing how the x and y aspects of the graph are changing independently of each other. When we're talking about the derivative in the rectangular sense that we're used to, we're thinking about a function that describes how the x and y variables are changing relative to each other. In other words, what we really want is a formula for calculating dy dx. So we're going to start off with a set of parametric equations, uh, y of t and x of t. And we're going to assume that y is a differentiable function of x. Now, I'm not saying that we can necessarily find this function f, just that the differentiability relationship exists. If it doesn't, then there isn't any point in going any further trying to find a formula for something that doesn't even exist. So. Now, starting with our, our, our y function, I want to make the relationship with t explicit. So I'm going to write out the of t part for both the y and the t functions. Next, I'll differentiate both sides. That makes the left side just y prime, and the right side, because it's the composition of two functions, f and x, we can find using the chain rule. Now, this is nice, but it's a little messy. It gets clearer and easier to manipulate if we write it using Leibniz's version of the derivative notation. Now, finally, remember the goal. We're trying to find a formula for dy dx. So we can get that by dividing both sides by dx dt. And that gives us our formula for the derivative of y with respect to x, with kind of this standard condition here, right, that the denominator can't be equal to zero. All right, so we already have the components of our new formula from earlier in the lecture. dy dt equals minus sine of t, and dx dt equals 1. Now, if I substitute those into our formula, this gives us minus sine of t divided by 1, which is just minus sine of t. And that's exactly what we expect the derivative of the cosine to be. All right, so now notice one thing here. Notice that our derivative, uh, despite being y with respect to x, is still a function of t, just like the original parametric equations. Now, if you're using parametric equations, then you're most likely uh, going to be focused on the parameter as the driver for finding the coordinates of points. For example, you might want to know the rate of change after three seconds rather than for specific x and y values. So it's good that our derivative formula comes out in terms of the parameter uh, rather than x or y. All right, so the one thing we still need is a formula for the second derivative. Now remember that the second derivative is just the derivative of the first derivative. So if we start with our formula for dy dx and replace the y's with dy dx, it becomes the derivative of dy dx. Now, that might look a little confusing. So let's let's take a minute uh, and think about what it's saying, right? To find the second derivative, you would start by finding 
the first derivative, then differentiate that function with respect to t, which we can do. Remember from our, our discussion on the last slide that our dy dx formula gives us a function of t. And finally, divide that by dx dt, just like you did uh, with the first derivative formula. All right, so now that we have our two formulas in hand, we're ready to look at some specific questions. In the next lecture, we'll look at some basic examples, then and in the following lecture, we'll look at some more complex situations.